So welcome to Buddy's Designs. Um, this is part two of um, the Colour My Sketchbook by Bennett Klein. Um, and I think this is the first book, but don't hold me to that because it's my first book. And I'm colouring the octopus hair hat lady. I've been using some Derwent pastel pencils and this is a portrait set so it's quite an old set uh, but I love love the colours um, and they're a little I've got the new set but these are a little bit thicker strips in the middle so um, I think as everything things change and become better and da, 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 so they've got to be different a little bit um, I mean these are literally 10 20 blue 30 25 years old whatever they're pretty old and I've never used them so found that these are easy to use so uh, this is part two uh, being recorded for ustream.tv and also for YouTube for people to watch at their leisure and apologies for part one uh, but I was having a, a bad thumb day and um, I realized that my thumb was in the way most of the time so hopefully I'm going to try and keep my thumb and hand out of the way so you can actually see what I'm doing so I've still got my same old blender tool, which is the Colour Shaper. It's a Taper Point Firm number 6. And there are some finer points on there. And this is, I think, from the works. So it doesn't have a name on it, but it's, it's a little bit finer, but it's still a squishy. So again, you know, you're not having a hard pencil down all the time. This is taking all the hard work out of your, uh, your hands. So at the moment I'm still using Forest Green F, which is a faint, uh, Green Umber, which is a B, and a Dark Olive. So the Dark Olive is the second lightest on here. So it's a bit of a strange uh, colour naming, but uh, this is from uh, an original portrait set, obviously. So it's for pale skin tones and, and skin, so it's going to be not as bold as the other set. Uh, but I liked the, uh, the colours in there. So I'll zoom in and we'll start. I'll zoom in and see how we do. I think the colour might stay nice. So it's a very pale, pale, very thin layer. I'm only putting one layer because this is ordinary paper. It's like ordinary printer paper, copy paper. Um, there's no tooth to it and normally with a pastel you need a tooth so if you just do a very thin layer you can get away with a nice little bit of colouring which is easy to do on your hands and you've got some lovely blending tools so you don't have to blend with lots of colours I've only got three so I'm actually going to turn that round just so it's a little bit easier for me to do and I don't put my hand on the colours I've just done because they will smudge this isn't a, pe a pencil, this is a pastel, so they will smudge. Um, and they're very blunt, again, the blunt end, I'm um, tight Yorkshire last. I'm not going to sharpen them until I have to, and I don't need to, which again is a beautiful way of not having to sharpen your pencils into oblivion every 30 seconds. Uh, so if I turn that round to there, I may just be able to sharpen that up a little bit, but maybe that's okay actually. Hopefully that's okay. So I'm on a live stream with live people. So welcome to Bunny's Designs. And uh, we've been discussing pastel pencils and Derwent's. And uh, I don't know if anybody else make them. I think they do. Um, but they're really nice to use in a colour book because you don't have any, any um, water. So if you have a thin page book that you like, you can still get some nice colours. Uh, so again, although I'm using these colours, one's like um, a baby powder blue, then one's a very, very soft pale olive green, and then one's a darker olive green, but that's not actually what they're called. So I'm using the palest one, and where it's the lightest, I'm putting the, the pale colour. Where it's uh, where I think the light's hitting, and then where there's any uh, anything else left that's plain white is having the second colour. And then when you've got cross hatching and hatching going on, I'm doing the darker colour. And then I'm just blending the two. So just about here, we haven't really got any pale colour, just a tiniest bit. So if I can keep my thumb out of the way, 
just stroking with no pressure on your hand just a little bit just once that's all you need and then the second color is just kind of going everywhere else thinking about where the shadows would be and I can just put a little bit of pale on there I'm desperately trying to keep and again just that little bit of stroking colour and then I mean you could sharpen them to get a very very precise colour but I want to show that you don't have to keep a point and sharpen your pencils to oblivion so you're going to have a little bit of dust on there so that means you've got rid of everything that doesn't want to stay so you can just gently with this bouncy little almost like a soft rubber a soft eraser um, and I clean mine on a baby wipe a damp baby wipe and then I dry it um, and I normally start with the palest first just and that's just going to take that stark white off you start with the palest and get rid of all that line so it's just kind of gently smooshed into the paper because there isn't a tooth normally with pastels you want a tooth a very rough paper and it has like a tooth to it a key to it and you're filling the key with the dust particles basically if you're doing it um, professionally but obviously this is a colour book so it's not going to stick on there forever unless you kind of when you've finished your page you give it um, a bit of a spray with some you just give it a little bit of a spray and because the light's hitting that way I do want these to be that little bit darker on this side uh, you want to spray it with either um, very bold hairspray or fixative. Um, but I found some deli paper in between will protect it just while you're colouring. Um, so again, and I love the fact that you don't have to press down at all you're just catching the smallest amount and then you want the second the second one which kind of goes everywhere else I tend to use three colors first because you can go in with two other colors I have so I'm using five colours, three to start with, and then um, just to give a bit more depth. I'm going to put a little bit of dark in there. And then the magic is the blending tool. So I didn't have much colour in that one, but that's fine. It's got a little bit of blue. Oh, sorry, my thumb's in the way again. I do apologise. Um, so what you're doing is just giving that those that highlight on those tentacles the palest colour because all you want is just to take off that stark white. Now, if you were doing a professional watercolour, you would use the paint the plate paper to actually represent a white, like a snow white, a very very bright white and sometimes you can do that with masking fluid so although this is very pale it's just taking the stark white off um, now I do have this at a funny angle you need to be because it's a point just to stroke like that but obviously if I do that you can't see what I'm doing and I'm just very carefully teasing that color around 
and I've made a mistake there. So what I can do, and this is going to sound like a bee stuck in a, um, a, a spider's web. And what you can do is just take off. I have to do it like that, actually. And if you make a terrible mistake, so if, if, for instance, I didn't want that on there, I wanted to highlight. Oh, goodness me, the postman is very late. In fact, it didn't stop. <laughs> um, you can, and you wanted to highlight, you can touch. And this is what I was going to show yesterday. You do this if you're doing a, a pencil sketch. I used to kind of always draw with an eraser scribble down colour and draw with an eraser. The postman, we've had snow this morning and the postman's got his shorts on. Yay! Sorry. The highlight of my day. <laughs> Thank you for looking, Suzanne. Suzanne says you'd be looking for these pastel pencils. So we're on a mission. But if you if you decided that, that you didn't like that, um, because I've not blended that, you can just take it off. You can just take that off. One thing you mustn't do though is to flick the bits off with your hand. So I use very carefully, I use a very soft, it's a professional watercolour brush actually, but it's extremely soft, it's sable. It's the say it wins a Newton sable, but it just helps me, and as much as I want to watercolour with it, I won't be watercolouring, I don't think. Not unless I can afford operations on my thumb. <laughs> to rebuild my hands, that would be good. So that's, if you've really made a boo-boo, you can get rid of it. And if you don't, if you want it back in. And that works even if you've actually blended it, you can still do that. So I'm just going to blend that little bit into there. Because I think that will be quite dark. So it could be a bark alert, sorry. Um, now that is a, a little bit too pale, I think. If I pan out now, you probably see that that's... I'm sorry about the fan on the... It doesn't quite match this one up here or that one um so maybe that one's too dark so what i could possibly do is see if it would work i don't know i've never done this before so let's have a play i can't i, don't, I can't grip my thumb so apologies if it's in the way so we think maybe that that's going to be a little bit too pale thinking probably there would be, it's the lightest apart from here. And this has been smudged, bearing in mind, this has been blended. But it'll all come off. In fact, I'm going to take it all off. It will leave a slight stain. Uh, but nothing that can't be covered up. So. I've actually taken all of it off, nearly. I'm going to take that off down there as well. That's too dark. And it was unbalancing it all. So again, just got to be that little bit careful. But it out, all this faffing about outbalances the fact that you don't have any water. And you end up with a nice effect. So I've got my three colours and I've left I've left the, the highlight and the shadow and I've got my three colours to blend. So the palest colour is this, um, this very palish blue, which doesn't sound like blue, but it is. So I'm going to just put the tiniest little bit in there and on here. And then everywhere else I said that had white would be the middle colour. And then where it's shadowed, we want a little bit of 
the other colour. And I did put a little bit of blue in that and I've just ruined it. So I can just finish that on. <sighs> yeah, because I didn't blend it, I could smush it off. Because <sighs> I did like that little tiny little bit of a highlight I've got there. Has anybody got any questions? So welcome to Bunny's Designs. I'm just going to, if I zoom back in again, we can see that I've leveled it up that little bit, but it's still quite rough. It needs it needs blending. So I have a little, oops, I have a pot of water which I've just spilled um, on a baby wipe, and I dip that in if it's a dark colour and just wipe it. Oops, sorry, I'm trying to get my thumb to work, and I just wipe. Um, it's dried. It's probably dried that baby wipe there, so we could we could tip that water, and that's quite good because you can reuse your baby wipes if they're not too dirty. So again, tight Yorkshire lass. Um, so that's fairly clean now. And then you can wipe it on your old cardigan if you want. <laughs> and then all we're doing is just. smushing that colour together because you're not really blending you're just smushing it into the paper and then that becomes a natural kind of light um, I try to do all the paleness first but I don't always remember um, and we can just take that round because there always is a little bit on the end and then we can we could just do with a little bit of blue under there because the light will be coming from the other side and then take that round and that down and then that's matched with that one now so it doesn't look too different now but it's a make-believe octopus so you know it can be whatever colour you want really <laughs> so uh, Again, just using those three and if I wasn't stopping and, and waffling it, it, it's fairly quick because I would I would kind of do quite a lot of this just want the tiniest bit and take the blending tool <sighs> always have to remember to blow because you want rid of this excess Cause it, it, if it hasn't stuck on there you want rid of it really just swoosh that into there And when I did the berries this morning um, on the little mouse one um, in daydreams, it was just the tiniest little tiny bit of colour. And I must have got about five colours out of one pencil mark. And I quite like that. And then under here, again, we've got um, filling in frame. Um, And again, you know, you could go around each one, but I don't really have the time, the patience, or anything. And we want some of that there. And then we want just the tiniest, especially down there where there's going to be the deepest colour. Um, and don't forget to clean your you put dark onto it will mark if you put dark without cleaning the uh, so you start with a palest again you're just smushing that color around and then we go to the next color and then can you Push that around a little bit, and then last of all, 
push that darkest one in there to kind of really make its mark. So we've done three colours. Um, a piece of paper. And I'll just show you how much colour's left on there. There's still a little belly bit, but you don't want that on a pale colour because you'll ruin it. So if we move down here, we've just got a few more tentacles to go. And I'm going to put a little bit of that. I'm actually going to put this blue here on here. This is the palest. Because I really want that to be light. One more tentacle to do on a shoulder, and then we've. Uh, and again, you know, you just even if it's just kind of a, a mark. Oh, sorry, thumb. I can't use my thumb. Um, and then we've got the darkest one. That we're using and then all the work is done <sighs> as if you would with the Derwent pencils you then use the paintbrush to kind of blend it together with a drop of a damp brush this way we're using a little blending tool uh, you can use a cotton wool board you can use these little torsions here I've got one here that probably would be better to use for the paler areas. But again, that's just that bit too hard for me because it's 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 almost like putting a pencil on a pencil. This is nice and soft. So it doesn't create any tension on my hand. Uh, so that's why I'm using that. And again, I've just touched that. So if you want to get your crisp lines back, it's so easy just to do that. Right, so I'll show you that now. Finished. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Suzanne's, I, and I love the fact that different people use different colours. Suzanne says she's using... Uh, geranium pink for the octopus uh, but remember I started this with my 36 pale colors I didn't have my others but yes it would be wonderful um, and that's why I'm doing these digitally as well I've done this one digitally in, in very bright colors uh, just let me see if I can because what I want to show you the difference oh dear, excuse me it's the coffee so this is without the extra bits. Now, the last two. So I've had the three colours. So this is the this is Ultramarine F and Umber B. So I've got a dark and I've got a pale. Now, I, I could really sharpen these if I felt like it. But if I scrape off any of this pastel colour, it's going into a, um, a palette to make a, a watercolour. Because I love this colour and the thought that I've got this in a watercolour, a reconstituted watercolour, um, means I'm not going to use it uh, and scrape it into a, uh, scrape it into the bin. So all I'm going to do now is just a touch, literally a touch. And that is the finest line anyway. So, so I've done all the three colours. I've done a light, a medium and a dark. And now I'm going in with this really dark colour. Where I think it would be dark. A 
and just the tiniest little bit and it's not neat at all sorry Alfie's snoring I do apologize Alfie's away with the fairies bless him and I think that would be dark there and then the palest bit's going to be on top on this bit here that bit there and I've done that one I've been up there with this yesterday so that'd be good and then we need a little bit of a and we just want to just go back over the palest first oh my goodness that's the other one I don't know where he is sorry thought he was in the kitchen. Alfie's very good at, at throwing his snores though. So just very carefully go back over. Sometimes you don't always see where you've been. So it's... Um, and then you can go into the darker areas. So really take that up. And this is the difference now. Just to make the areas a little bit different and again you know you can just you could do it neater than me but I'm doing it at a funny angle and you can just really make that octopus sit on her head there. And perhaps I should have done this bit first. So it wasn't quite as dark. And apologies if my thumb's in the way. I just can't do anything. <laughs> I can't do anything with it, but And that little bit of darks just kind of made the other bit just pop out a little bit. And sometimes you'll find other places that you think, oh, that needs a little tiny bit. It's just a little bit there that I think might a little bit so that's just made a little tiny bit of difference I think just those dark areas just made a tiniest bit of difference and again just under there just that line And sometimes if you if you make a mistake and it's too obvious and again I haven't actually done her collar oh, God, sorry thumb will not work just carefully take that and although that was blended that's lifted off and that highlight I've lost that highlight on her neck and um, there was just Maybe the highlights on here. I'm just going to have to just, because there is a little bit of a point on there. And his eyes. Just sound like there's a bumblebee stuck in a, a nest. just make those pop so you can see I've just put a highlight on there and on the eyes it's just made them a little bit different and I think I lost a bit of a highlight somewhere else as well didn't I um, can't think where it was now I can't think where it was have a look I'm not actually turning it on I'm just kind of um, sure I lost a bit of a highlight somewhere 
Oh, there. The dark smudge. Just managed to get that highlight back, and so it's now dark. And again, you know, it's a colour book. I don't want to play too much with it, but I want it. I want to do it a fair amount of of accuracy. Um, oh, look at this! I forgot this. <laughs> I forgot that one and that one. She's playing with that like it's a set of beads. So again, I need the three colours. So I'll do this really quickly. But it's still not as long as some colour books take. So we want the pale one. Um, and it is a little bit of scribble. That's all it is. Just a little bit of scribble. And we'll do this one as well at the same time. So again, just... Because when you blend it through, if you put a dot on each one, and literally it is a dot, a second one which is everywhere in between and I've done her face and forgotten her hand so I'm going to have to do that in a minute so I've made a mistake there so I'm going to have to go back into that I probably could do it maybe a, um, a little bit more of a point on, but I like the fact that they're rounded and soft, very much like a pastel pencil, uh, like a pastel. You know, it's, 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 you do this when you have a big fat squidge of pastel, you know, you... So those are the three colours. If anybody's got any questions, pop them in caps. What have I missed? Oh, bye for now, Suzanne. Thank you for joining us. Anybody else? Oh, hi, hi, Diamond too. Welcome to Bunny's Designs. No, Dorothy. Uh, no, D. I don't die. I don't think so either. Uh, it's it's a long time ago. Um, it's just I'm a bit obsessive about having full sets of things, but you know I've got some of them. Somebody may have some lurking about that they don't want anymore, and they'll pop them on eBay someday, probably. I mean, I nearly did if it wasn't the fact that my daughter had used them. So you're just kind of smushing the colour around with a little bit of smushing. And because now that's got kind of olive right on the end, you can actually move that colour where you hadn't put it before if you'd forgotten. Apologies for thumb being in the way, it's not it's not behaving itself. And okay, the beauty of this is it doesn't matter where you get it, you can just erase it if you find it somewhere that you really don't want. But again, because I've worked really rough there, I wanted to work really rough there. So there's a bit of continuity there. And then I'm just going to put the, the darkest shade, but there's not much. There's just the tiniest little bit there and there. And then, of course, under here has got to be quite dark. And pale and put some pale on there because they can again it's another colour to get in there but bearing in mind there's no tooth so we are just playing on paper so I've only got five colours but and again I must remember to clean this because I've used I've used it on dark olive and I do want that pale to stay as pale as I can so I'm being a bit careful around there, but then once we've done the palest colour, the rest of it can be 
squished around a little bit and then we want the darkest and then I've made a bit of a mistake there so I'm just kind of smush that in there and I can bring her collar back to life if I want to see and if I do that these will pop out so that'd be quite nice and down there and you'd be really surprised at what little marks you can make with this blending tool without much effort I want that to be a little bit paler and I've gone over a hand so I'm going to just go now in with the eraser to kind of finish it off oh, I keep forgetting to put that there so So the mistake is I colour in the centre here. Now I have to there is a bit of a an edge on here, so I can just get in there and once you find where the edge is, that becomes easier. That bit on her hand under there I wanted to come off, and that bit on her finger. So by doing that, I can take the finger back to being pale again, but leave the blended mark when I want it and the collar. I just caught the collar a little bit too much and her neck. So then these five can go away now because I think we've finished. We've found every little bit of tentacle. Um, so I'll put these back. And we've got a 74, I'll turn that one over and put a 29 down there. And the only reason I keep them all in order is it's just easier to find them. So, um, you know, I know that all these pails are here so I can see them in order. Just to make it a little bit easier, so quicker. Um, so if you've used the eraser you can just kind of very carefully blend that up until you can actually kind of brush it off but off the page but that would smudge if you touched it it would smudge unless you want to smudge your background then it would be fine I think my light's gone a little bit a little bit crazy again hasn't it put that together Um, so I now, if I just pull that that way, hmm, that didn't work very well. So I'm not sure what colours to do. I'm going to stay with the pale colours, I think. Um, so a cream, a nice, a nice soft. Orange. Um, I think orange would look quite well just need and I've got the burnt sienna which looks quite of a pale so the burnt sienna is a six is a D but it's very pale so I'll just show how I sharpen my pencils so that's I don't need that to be wet so I'll dry that so I'll show you how I sharpen my pencils 
they've got the little tin there and they've got the guide there so you put the guide in and it's round this pencil so you can twist it so basically I've kind of broken that so I very carefully remove my scalpel blade and I just have my thumb and it's moving away from me I probably could have that on a piece of paper catch all the bits and I use this edge here as a guide it's a bit of a guide is that so if you start there you've got quite a nice amount and if you do it if you dig down you're going to end up with a, hitting the, the strip first but if you gently stroke across it's a lot easier turn it and stroke it turn it stroke it all you're doing is just stroking it almost vertical so you're just taking off slivers and you just keep turning it and my thumb is really bad today so and they really are just slivers now if you notice it's broken again look there but that's pure colour I'm going to put that to one side so I've obviously damaged this pencil but as I say they are very very old and what I'm doing is I'm just taking this to the wood I'm holding it away from the edge so you can see and again it's broken again that one see there you can it's, it's different it's a difficult color to see you can just see the strip of color and what I want to do is I want to take the wood away and, ne and not really touch that color So there is hard, hardly any colour being scraped away, just taking the wood off. Now I'm only doing this because this is an old pencil and it's, it's not probably the best one to show you how to do it. But what I have now is a fat strip of bare, you can't see very well because of the colour look. If I wanted it to be a point, I would then sharpen it and twist it and sharpen it. But I wouldn't use the blade like this, I would use the blade like that and twist. And that's how you get a beautiful point. But that's pure colour. And if I was going to do that, I would collect the colour, add water to it, and then I would have a beautiful pastel watercolour. But I'm not going to do that because I've got a bit of a ridge on there so I can use that. It's still, that to me, that's going to be point enough. So I'm going to put the pencil down. First thing I'm going to do before I put the blade down is put it to the tip of the eraser. Move my hand out the way and push down. Gently. Now that's only because it's never been in there before, apart from once. Eventually it'll have a nice little hole in there. And that's the first thing to do before you do anything else because that will take your hand off you put it safe and then we can get rid of the shards so that's the only bit i waste now if i had twisted that in a pencil sharpener there probably wouldn't be any pencil left it would probably keep going and because i've, I've obviously dropped well i have dropped them i have them so many times um, 
and hopefully I won't be doing that with these tins because these new pencils are in this little bag, little derwent bag, and so they've got, you know, as soon as I've got the pencil out, the pencil goes back. Then they're not rolling everywhere. So I've now got my three colours, and I was about right. I have a very pale, a medium, and I've got like a tangerine colour. But if you look at the ends, they're different. Um, I've got a baked orange, uh, an orange earth, a burnt sienna, and an orange earth faint. So the thing is, this year do lots of bits everywhere. So um, how are we doing for time? Oh, we're not doing so much for time. So I'm going to finish the, the bow off. Excuse me, a quick slurp of cold coffee. I've just left the pencils there just so they're a bit easier. Uh, so the palest one is where I think the light would hit. So the light's going to be there on that on that fold on that bit on that curve there on that there on that V there on that bit on that bit and then there the top of there top of there that bit and that's her hand so she's going to have a bit there uh, then practically none at that side. I want if I zoom in. <coughs> Excuse me. down here a bit. The light will disappear then I think. So there's just a touch there. So the, the, the one I've just sharpened, <coughs> I've got to be a bit careful with it because it's quite a lot of uh, colour there. So that's going to be the next colour. So everywhere else it's white. <coughs> oh dear, excuse me. Excuse me, I haven't quite got rid of my cough. And then with the the darker kind of orange colour, we're going everywhere where there's cross hatching. <coughs> Excuse me. Now what I should have really done is <coughs> Excuse me, tested them first on a piece of paper, but I didn't. But they're actually okay. They're just about okay, though, so that's fine. <coughs> oh, do excuse me. I may just have to do this bit without talking for a minute. <coughs> excuse me. So, if you can see there just the wind but he's gone to bark <coughs> excuse me there could be a bark alert so I've got my three colors there I'm gonna make sure that I've got rid of all the olive <coughs> it might have been the dust from that uh, pencil a quick slap
if I get dust on the back of my throat, my asthma decides that it wants to play. <laughs> <clears throat> <coughs> Sorry about that. So, you can see there, I start with the palest and really just gently rub around. And it's very, very rough. There's no preciseness about it. <coughs> Unfortunately, I'm having and you can go around smushy movements if you want. Depends if you want it blurry or if you want it kind of a little bit darker. You want to sit down, Alfie? I don't really like it when he's wandering around. Good boy, come and sit down. It's a good boy. So, although it looks like I'm just smooshing this round, it's giving quite a nice effect. Oh, sorry, bark alert. Don't know what is barking at. Oh, for sure, she should be silly. <coughs> <coughs> and it, this is quite squishy, this. I don't know if you can see it squishing. So it's taking all the bounce out of my hand is, is, is okay. So if I just zoom out a little bit. <coughs> I do, excuse me. You can see... I've missed just a couple of places, so um, this particular place there and under there. So you can go back in again and you can go the same colour or darker. So I'm just going to go back in with the same colour. Because I quite like the effect it's had. Um, and I'll start that way and again just a little gentle smudges, little circular motions. It would be better if I held it like this, but obviously I'm in the way, so <clears throat> you can't see what I'm doing. So you know it's yours is gonna be a lot better than this. This is very rough uh, smushing round. So if you want the dark to smudge with the light. You smudge it one way and if you don't want anything to get onto your light don't touch it with the dark I just kind of like this idea that it's smudging around and uh, you know this that's not a bad I don't know if the lights caught it it's a little bit better So, if we zoom out a bit, she now has a blouse. And I didn't use a darker colour, oopsie, I didn't use a darker colour. Um, so I can put these three back now and I need to do a, <clears throat> I do need to do I think I'm going to use this one. No idea what that is at all, so apologies. It sounds like a helicopter, but then it, it didn't. Oh. 
I didn't use the third, this, oh, that's the second one. Um, and that was number 62. <clears throat> I've got to be a little bit careful of that because it doesn't have the point on it. And I didn't find a colour on her thumb. Um, but if I zoom in, No. Sorry, no, shut up, shut up, there's nobody there. Alfie, okay, there's nobody there, there's not even a lorry, shush. Sorry about that. Goodness gracious. So I forgot to put colour on her thumb, but if I smush that around, um, and I might make that a bit pinker actually, because obviously she's now got the same colour hand as her. There's enough colour just to take that colour off her thumb. So I need a bit of a fleshy pink colour now. And we have... here so that's gonna that's gonna get rid of that <clears throat> and I've got to do her ear so I'm just hoping I've got enough colour here. Just smudge up there. I don't need to do her ear now. I've just got the blouse. <clears throat> I've just got her blouse to do now and her earring. So I shall do this and I'm going to think in the third part, if I have time for a third part, what are we doing for time? <coughs> Excuse me. So in the one on the, I did, I think I might do a blue, I could do a purpley blue. So I do have a purpley there and a purpley there. So if you're not used to colours, what I normally do, and I forgot to do that last time, is just have a play. So that's the pale, that's the next one, and that's the next one. And then have a bit of a blend and see what they look like together. They may not go or they may go. Um, I think I might go purple-blue rather than... They're both burnt carmine though, so they're quite nice, but I want purpley blue really. Um, I think we might have to go with a bit darker blue. And isn't he going to go with this one? So again clean with a little blending tool and then pale to dark so they look quite nice together <coughs> so where it's very pale and I would think that's the ruffles and, and maybe just a little bit of here Oops. sorry about that and a little bit here And then we have the second. I think that's the brightest, so we're going to have the brightest. And 
and then we want the kind of darkest colour then. And bear in mind, this is scribble. The pencils will actually go whichever way you push them, so they will actually go. It's just dust on top of a page. It, they will be pushed out quite nicely. So again, we can start. Oh, I didn't put any blue on that one. Did I? And again, you just want the tiniest amount. So just going to squish that together. I mean, you can do each individual one if you want, but uh, kind of. I'm going to stay with the lines of the dress. Because it's a bit liney. <clears throat> and then and my thumb just does not want to work, so I just. Push that up into there. As you can see, that because the lines are there, you can manipulate that colour in any direction that you really want to in order to eradicate those nasty scribble lines that we did <coughs> excuse me so we've got this tiniest little bit here and then the pencils work very well at blending Manipulate them where you want them. Perhaps I shouldn't have done it quite so scratchy, but so I apologise for the bark alert. Um, don't know why there is a bark alert, but there is a bark alert. So, so um, thank you for watching. I'll cut. I'll I have to finish because she's going to bark for a good few minutes now. Uh, and apologies and yes um, I know we don't like barking so thank you for watching um, so that's the end very quick so if you haven't finished with it you can put your piece of paper and you can shut it if you have when I finish the book I'm going to spray it with with a hairspray or fixative but I've got asthma so I'm going to ask someone to do that outside so thanks for watching. That's the uh, part two of the lady with the octopus hair. Lift that up a little bit. You can probably see the whole, whoopsie, the whole thing. That's it. <clears throat> oh, I haven't done the earring. I do have the earring to do. <laughs> um, but I'll show, I'll show that on something else because I'm just wary that he will, he will bark. Um, I just see if I have the most vivid of yellows. I might just get away with it. And then the palest. I'm not going to do three colours, I'm just going to do two. And hope that we catch the light. But, and very quickly. Don't forget to clean all that blue off.
very quick zoom in. He seems to have gone into the other room now. So that was just with two colours. So it's not too bad. So we've got some nice colour in there. Could do probably with a little bit better blending, but my, my thumb's not is misbehaving today, so can and you can see that that's the ear and then that's her blouse and she's all pastel pencil. Oh, I haven't done the lips either for goodness sake, Heather, this morning. I don't think we want really tart, tarty, bright red lips. I think we'll go with just a little hint of a colour. So she has just the faintest colour on her lips. Um, so that's the end of, oopsie, sorry, wrong way. That's the end of part two. And uh, I quite like the colours. Again, they were, they were a little bit um, of a limited palette because I just had the very pale colours. Um, but that's quite nice sometimes to work with a limited palette. So thank you for watching. And uh, if you have any comments or requests, please uh, please subscribe and uh, leave any comments. And I'll try and colour in what, what you request. Thank you for watching.